All right, hi all, welcome back. Make sure I got this I needed. Um, so our next session is going to be a 14 out of planning session. Uh, this is similar to kind of the have need want sessions we've done in the past. So I sent the URL, I need to still paste it to YouTube. Let me do that. And auto correction is a spell. I can be as a thing. Um, so we're going to kind of go through a discussion where we talk about, you know, what are plans or things to work on over the next kind of one and a half to two years, because uh, when Fortinet was tentatively kind of on track to come out. So we want to talk through things that we uh, have kind of a few different categories, things that we have or something that uh, someone already kind of has a patch or a version of, maybe it needs some work to get upstream, but it's it already exists in, in some form or fashion. Um, Things that are things that people need is something that you don't currently have this in FreeBSD, but you as a consumer of FreeBSD in some way, you need this for some product that you're going to ship. It's a missing feature or a new piece of hardware that needs to be supported. Um, then we have a want category, which are things that are a little more pie in the sky. Like it'd be really nice if I had unicorns and ponies. Um, and that's where the, the you can put those requests in want. And then finally, we had a new session last time when we held this session uh, in November for the, at the Vendor Summit, which is we've added a session for things we want to remove from the tree. As uh, especially the last several years, we've kind of picked up the pace a bit in removing things from the tree. So we've added a new session for that. So uh, as I mentioned right before our break, uh, normally with these sessions, we start off with a clean slate every time, and then we kind of duplicate some previous entries, and it becomes hard to kind of keep track of which things got done and which things didn't. So. For 14.0, I'm trying a different approach for this, which is I want to have the same document that kind of survives throughout 14.0's kind of lifetime as head, and that we update, um, noting when things get done and when they, you know, kind of the progress of things as we go along. So I took our version from last November, uh, earlier this week, and I added some updates to it, um, noting which things had already been merged or trying to update owners in some cases uh, for things that I knew someone was actively working on. And so, uh, some of it's already pre-populated, but from here on out, we're going to spend the rest of the session just walking through this list. We can either um, update the state of items if there's items that need state, or we can add new items that people are working on. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first, let's walk through the have list um, and see if there's anything people need to update about the current have list, the state of things that they want to talk about or if there's things in the have list that, uh, that people need to add that's new bits of work they have that they want to merge into 14.0 and kind of have sitting in a tree somewhere. So Ed, Ed is going to help with, I think Ed is sharing his screen so we can see the HackMD as it gets edited live as we walk through this. Um, we're all going to collectively keep an eye on chat. Um, so folks on Zoom, you guys can type questions in. Um, you can also raise a hand if you'd like to talk. We'll see if that works. You're also welcome to ask questions on Discord or on IRC, and we'll keep an eye on those. And one uh, one one comment uh, brought up on IRC is that everything that goes on here um, needs to have an owner. And this isn't yes. necessarily the person who is going to do the work, um, but someone who is responsible for tracking the progress of this item and um uh shepherding uh shepherding it in uh, uh the sort of you know the, the flag waiver or uh project manager for the specific feature essentially yes nothing goes to list without a person <laughs> and then we can bug later to go hey what's up with that um so looking through some of these things some of these things are already uh been committed there's not really much to talk about there i don't know uh I mean, look, let's look at the stuff that's already on the list, I guess, and walk through them. One's already committed, probably don't need more discussion. Uh, the ones for hole punching for Vnode, I know there's a set of reviews. I listed the first one um, for this, and but there's like a stack of seven, eight reviews because it touches several different things as a new syscall. I don't know if there's more work for that other than to say that it's in progress. One, one comment, uh, John, on the, the items that are already committed. Um, I mean, we don't want to go through them in detail here because it'll no, take too long. But, but one thing we, we may want to do is if there's any of them that folks know uh, are missing documentation or um, 
you know, following on from the release note discussion that we had yesterday, um, if there's any of those sorts of things that we know are are needed for any of these or are going to be a uh, significant amount of work, we, we might want to um, note, make note of them. Yep. I mean, it might be good to even see, you know, compare this list against real notes yeah. periodically. And if something's not missing, then you need to explain, you know, figure out why yep. <laughs> they're not worthy or not. Um, so I think the whole punching, whole punching thing is in progress. Um, ARM64 support for Beehive. I know uh, there are several different folks working on this. The folks at UPB have a branch and they have a, a open review, which I should tag uh, over in the third column for this. And uh, Andrew Turner at Cambridge has also been working um, with their patches and has some other in additional patches that he's been using to test. So I know that's in progress and it's not committed yet. Um, it might be good to add the link to the reviews. Um, so in particular, a uh, third well, column would either do a, when it's committed, you can have a link to the commit or a link to review or to review, or if you just have a patch somewhere, if you want to, you can be any link to kind of a patch. It could be a patch to like a GitHub tree or something like that. Um, Morello support, that's a, that's a big thing. You don't need to get in more into that. Um, my branch about standard IO, I do have a GitHub branch I can point to, but that one's held up more on fixing ports issues, particularly GNU lib. Uh, so, so this ChaCha20, I got all the bits for that upstreamed into the kind of the base crypto layer and for KTLS, but there's also interest in using that protocol for IPsec. I can't find the review when I looked the other day, um, I believe it was from AE, um, had a review that had a bunch of IPsec changes in it and it included the ChaCha support among several other changes. And I think the ChaCha support was like two lines of code <laughs> or something like two lines in like four places. So I know that exists somewhere. So I just need to try to find, if I, I couldn't find the review, but if someone knows of it and can add the link, that would be really nice. Um, Alan, did you want to talk any more about IPMI attachment for ARM64? Trying to find Alan somewhere. Other than still needs a bit of work. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, it was some work that uh, got started, but then kind of got put on hold. So if people are interested in it, uh, it's most of the way there and just uh, needs a bit of cleanup. There's comments and uh, I think it's actually a series of like eight or nine reviews. Each of the separate commits is a separate okay. review from Mark's tool, uh, but it's most of the way there and it seems to work although so it works but uh some users are reporting that the the ipmi device stops working after a while and we haven't managed to get to the bottom of that yet okay well well that could also be just flakiness of the bmc like yes. that would not be the first bmc that was flaky so um yeah and so uh being able to test on a slightly wider set of hardware um and with even just different firmware revisions uh, would be helpful in that case. And so does, for ARM64, is it using the normal, or is it using the same kind of transports or kind of protocols we're talking to the BMC that x86 uses? So for example, are you using like? the existing KCS code and SMIC and so forth? Uh, somewhat, a little bit of it is different. Uh, it also, like in this particular case, I think it attaches via ACPI or something. I don't know. Um, it, yeah, there wasn't that much new code. It was mostly about finding the offset in a different place than it, okay. you find it on x86. Yeah, because the IPMI driver is like split into, it has two fan outs. It has like three different ways on x86 that we find it. And then it has different drivers for different back ends. And so if all you're changing is kind of the front ends for how you find it, it seems pretty low risk to merge, um, even if it's not perfect on some, it, or yeah. I guess I would say if you haven't changed the back ends and you're seeing flakiness, that's probably not the problem in the driver, but probably a problem in the hardware that you may not be able to fix. Right. So I wouldn't want that to hold it up. Um, the next one on here is hardware accelerated SHA in ZFS, which also has your name. So I'm going to hit some ones that have your name while you're here. Yeah. Uh, so that one's not contributed by me. That was contributed by a, a contributor, uh, Jeremy Faulkner or something. Uh, but I've been I don't know. He's attends my local BSD user group, and so I've been deputized to help land it. Um, so, in particular, the 
there's a set of patches to the ZFS side, which will go upstream and open ZFS. But first, some bits uh, in open crypto need to land so that ZFS can take advantage of them to, to actually do it. And uh, need some help figuring out what has to happen there. It's mostly changing in if having to do with when you use open crypto to, to do the SHA of it, and you're not doing it as part of encrypting something. It's a little over my head. OK. Uh, but I'll get a fabricator review of the FreeBSD side of it posted, uh, and that will probably help move it forward. Because right now, the patch in Bugzilla is both the FreeBSD and the ZFS bits, because you can't really test one without the other. Uh, but a final commit would likely be just um, the, the FreeBSD parts of it, and then we'll upstream the ZFS parts uh, via OpenZFS and, and pull it in via the vendor branch or et cetera. And then you had one, uh, a couple, skip a couple down, uh, the KVM clock one, uh, that's kind of in progress. Yeah, so that's in progress. Uh, but what we could really use is help testing it uh, in lots of different configurations. So this is if you're running FreeBSD as a guest under KVM, which you know most VPS providers like DigitalOcean and Volter and all the others are, uh, then this driver will make your clock faster uh, and have less drift and so on. Uh, and so to support testing it, we made a ports KMOD for it. Uh, that will run on like 12.2 as well as 13 and, and current. Uh, so the the actual review has the VDSO stuff and a bunch of libc changes as well. Uh, but And the KMOD doesn't include that, but it gives you at least half of the benefit. Uh, you get like a 10x improvement instead of a 100x improvement. But uh, we'd really like people to, to test that and have some hours on it before we land it in head. And then maybe someday we can make a beehive backend for it as well, so that uh, you, we can use the same precepts to uh, have a fast clock in FreeBSD guests running on top of beehive. Yeah, I, and actually, I talked to Peter about that a bit, and I think he thinks the um, individual whose name escapes me who's working on it might actually be working on the beehive bits as well. I think so, yes, Adam Fenn. Yes, yes, that's the right name. OK, so let's move down the list. Um, the next one I have is from Warner, which is about uh, ending the error. Well, actually, Brooks, did you want to say something? What was what? Did you want to say something earlier about Cherry, for example, that I that I kind of glossed over? Um, well, I th I think uh, we're interested in the possibility of um, upstreaming our changes for uh, supporting Cherry and on ARM's Merlot boards, and we'd probably do Risk Five as well. Um, I think the question is a matter of timing and whether we can get funding um, as the changes are large and would require extensive review. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of a lot of the, the thoughts about that and, and the scope of what kind of changes we can do. I know from Aaron and Cherry, we are trying to find ways to a, minimize our diff on our side, but also upstream the things that we can that make sense that aren't necessarily cherry specific up as first to kind of keep that diff as small as we can, but it's still rather ginormous. So yeah, I think that's what I had. Okay. Um, so let's see, going down the list. I think next I had Warner to talk about um, NVMe error recovery. Do you want to say more besides what you have on the wiki on the pack and D right now? And if you do, raise your hand um, and let you talk. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so um, I was just going to say that um, right now the error recovery is fairly primitive. If we can't reset, um, bad things happen, um, particularly on commodity NVMe um, in that two boards. Uh, and the error recovery will make it so that we can recover more often. Um, there's two bits here. One, there's a couple of races in the review. And also, um, I want to do a function level reset if the card level reset um, fails. But that's it. it. It'll just make NVMe drives more resilient in the face of being crappy and under high load. Okay. 
Uh, let's see, the next one we had in have is work that uh, Gleb Smirnoff is doing with IMPCB synchronization. Uh, did you want to say more about that, Gleb? Uh, do, do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. So ju just a quick status update. So the rest, so since we moved to the epoch uh, for to synchronize stuff in the network stack, uh, there is some mm, concerns that the allocation free traffic of PCBs is too high for the epoch to handle. So particularly at Netflix, we don't see this as, as a big problem, but because we have long lead connections. Uh, but in general, so we discussed this with Jeff, uh, Mark, and others that Epoch should protect things uh, like interface configuration, uh, address list configuration, but the stuff that is allocated and uh, freed uh, at a high rate uh, needs to be uh, protected differently uh, so that it, you don't need to do this Epoch callback for, to free every particular item. Uh, so I got uh, my private branch where this switches to SMR with lots of uh, different rewrites, lookups and cleanups all around the PCB code. Uh, and it's in the progress. Uh, so that's <laughs> pretty much of uh, all of my status update. Okay, thanks. All right, so looking at the have, I think the last one we haven't talked about is work from uh, Ruslan working on GPU support for some ARM GPU cores. I don't know if Ruslan is on, oh, he is. Do you want to talk about that Ruslan or is, uh, what is there sufficient? Uh, yes, should you hear me? Yes. So I developed support for the ARM Mali GPU. Um, uh, which is a pan frost kernel driver and i developed it, it on um, rock chip rk 3399 board which is arm 64 board so this project largely depends on the drm for arm 64 and um, there is we we have uh, up, i have upstream with a few patches to that drm arm 64 project which is called drm sub 3 and um, Manu is reviewing them. Uh, we, I think, have uh, one chunk left for the DRM sub three before I can uh, submit the Panfrost kernel driver uh, to review. So uh, I tested it uh, with HDMI monitor and uh, it works very well, providing 60 frames per second uh, on a full HD resolution. Uh, so things works quite fast. I developed it, it on, uh, with, I tested it with uh, uh, Wayland and the uh, S-Way compositor, as well as we tested it with uh, uh, a bunch of demos from Mesa project, uh, 3D OpenGL, and uh, demos. So this is uh, sponsored by the UKRI. So I developed it, it in the Cambridge Computer Lab for the upcoming the Morel Award, and which which will have the ARM Mali similar ARM Mali GPU. Um, we don't have a board yet, so. I had to use rock cheaper card 3399. So yeah, as I said, it works well, uh, great. And we only need uh, to uh, have DRM sub three in the kernel before we can commit the pan frost. So that is, that's it. Okay, thanks for the update. Um, Andy, I know I kind of glossed over Beehive and ARM64. Did you want to talk about that? Or is there something else you wanted to talk about? Uh, no, I can think of. It's just, um, we did, we found some issues. I found some issues with the UPP code that they do things like allocate. We mean we have a lock held, I think, and all can allocate, we can't sleep. Um, that I would, I'm 
been fixing. Um, but I think it's mostly identical, or it shouldn't be too much different from what we've already got in review, other than the, a couple of jobs. Uh, uh, pretty much rewritten, uh, almost rewritten. Okay, one. Um, I think we, if people do hand okay. was that we might want testing soon. Okay, is there like a, a branch people can pull to test easily? Uh, yes, we've got well, I. We've got one in our custard cherry. Um, we've a FreeBSD Romali branch. If I can point people at. Okay, maybe add that to um, the pack B when you get a chance. Yeah, it doesn't currently contain the cut my some of my recent fixes because I haven't pushed them yet. But. Okay. One other question I had about the review is, do we think we can, right now it's kind of one giant review, which is really hard oftentimes for people to get reviewed. Do you think you can maybe pull out some of this, some smaller bits in advance and kind of split it up over time into smaller chunks that we can work on getting merged? I have been doing that with uh, some of the PMAP changes. Okay. This, uh, so we've got support for two stage, um, the two, the two stage page tables already. Um, and, the, and so I've been trying to get things in that aren't necessarily, or are needed by Beehive, but aren't necessarily under the um, Beehive direct, you know, um, directory. They're, uh, they're related things. Okay, that's fair. Okay. And um, we probably still need more work on the user space tools. I've got a very hacked up version. Well, I think it's fine, for example, if you merge some of the kernel stuff, even while the user space stuff is outstanding, just because, you know, carrying disk for a long time can get a lot of, you know, if we're, if we're headed in the right direction, it might make sense to merge some of the, like the kernel bits if they're more set, even if the user land bits take a lag a while to merge, just so you're not having to carry as long a diff outside. Hmm. Okay, so do we have anything else that anyone wants to add for have, or are we ready to move on to our next topic? I'm going to go check if IRC and so Okay, I think we're ready to move on to our next topic, which is need. Um, I've asked a question on IRC. If we can always add more has if they come up. Um, so let's walk through things that we need um, as opposed to things that are want. These are things that are a little more critical that folks really need in the next two years or so. Uh, and Manu, you're on like half of these. So if you're on the call, that would be really great if you, let's see. I don't see one IRC. So, okay, so I'm gonna proxy these by IRC. Um, there's several of these that you have down as you, um, including DRM and base, which I would be a big fan of, for um, x86 and ARM, at least 64 bit x86, um, video for Linux and base, and USB video class driver. Um, do you have anything you want to say about those? Have you kind of made any progress on any of those? All still relevant and working on them. Okay. Okay, so there's still, so the status is kind of the way they are. What about, and package base I know is very much in progress. Is there another person who's working on, uh, for example, Ed, are you also kind of working on package base along with Manu? Or is there another name we should tag there? Uh, 
I am very interested in helping you know, with package base, um, and I've I've done a little bit of work. Um, Kyle Evans uh, put in a fair bit of um, work iterating on issues as well, um, but I suspect Kyle is going to be uh, fairly uh, well occupied for the next little while. Um, so I mean I, I'm I'm happy to have my name down uh, beside package base for helping to to track and and um, and find find folks. Okay. Then next we have a couple that are that um, Bjorn had added before. I don't see him on the call either. Um, I know one of these is, at least is something that uh, Foundation is funding Bjorn to work on. So do you have an update on how that's going, the 802.11 AC in particular? So Bjorn's current focus is um, the the driver side of, of things, um, and uh, that's uh, that's making pretty good progress. Um, I expect there'll be um, a patch for for testing uh, imminently. Um, the fleshing out the remaining bits of 802.11 AC support um, is, is a little bit more nebulous still. Um, one of the tr troubles I think is that um, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's not really a binary, we, we have it or we don't. Um, we have a number of parts of uh, 11 AC implemented, right? So there's, there's a whole bunch of individual things that are, um, uh, are in the tree now, but I think what what folks generally mean when they say this is um, the ability to have uh, faster Wi-Fi speeds um, is, is really what um, uh, this is a proxy for, um, and I don't have a good uh, a good update on that. Okay, um, the next one that Bjorn had put down was Thunderbolt three USB four support, which I know Scott Long has also looked at for a bit. Um, I don't think he's working on that via the foundation. Is that correct? Uh, that is uh, that is correct at present. Yeah. Okay, and you're not aware of anyone working on that. I am not. Okay. I wonder if there's. A, I wonder if we should annotate. We didn't get a status update on a given time. Like with like I don't know, um, like a question mark in the field. Or something. Yeah, sort of a um, uh, as we've last uh, every time we go through this list, um, make sure that we have it. Yes. Uh, yeah. You put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> well, no, the third yeah. column might be the right. Right, but of... I put it on the wrong item. Uh, but I guess the oh. question is, we still we still need USB four support. Yes, but we but need an order. The question is, is somebody actually working on it or not? Yeah, and, and is the person the right person still if they're actively working on it? I think in general, that's if, if we have an annotation for like not sure, yeah, yeah. got a question mark somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, beyond that, oh, it's an Ed one. So uh, Intel Skylake sound controller. Yeah, so the um, uh, this is why the microphone doesn't work on my X1 Carbon. Um, you just need an older X1 because it works a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in, in general, I think um, uh, just always buy increasingly older laptops is not a viable path for. Oh, I, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> oh, come on, man. You're, you're no fun. <laughs> hey, hey, as someone who's got a stack of X220s uh, here, you know, I, I am very familiar with this this, this scheme. But um, but no, the, there's a. Been. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a DSP uh, in the audio path uh, here, and, and to be able to use the mic, uh, the microphones, um, you need to load firmware into this DSP, um, and it requires a newer HDA driver as well. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the newer driver is needed for other than getting the the firmware loaded. Um, it, it may be that that loading the firmware is sufficient. Um, to make it work, uh, and it's, it's not a significant um, uh, significant effort. But um, in any case, I, I haven't been able to look at it any further directly. Hey, okay. Ed, there's a, a, a big pull request that I turned into a fab review um, that is for wiring of a large variety of HDA sound yeah. controllers. 
<clears throat> do we need, um, is that something we can put under your name too, or? Um... Well, I think that one goes under your name, Warner, because you're already almost <laughs> like, you, you should get committed already. I'll see if it fixes the fact that I lose sound when I suspend and resume my uh, next one. But. <clears throat> Uh, I need a, a couple of reviewers for it to, to hit, uh, yeah, it worked for me, if nothing else. <sighs> um, okay, I'll have to test it then. <laughs> but I just add that as a line number so you, so you have a convenient um, uh, bug review on the need. That's a have, by the way, isn't it? That's a, that's, that's a have right now. The original submitter um, is actually looking at ways for harvesting that data from Linux in a, in a more generic way, but we might go ahead and commit what's there now. I'm talking to them as well. Okay, I've added a, okay, perfect. I mean, we also, I think, are going to need to, need to take a more holistic look at our um, oh. sound quirk uh, infrastructure um, because it's it's kind of, uh, I think it's not sustainable to keep um, growing that kind of list the way it's implemented. We need we need something that's sort of more easily maintainable for. Um, well, some of the, the that's part. what Warner was saying is that they were looking at something to auto convert the the quirks from Linux well, or whatever. There, there, there's two. Ed's absolutely right. There's two pieces here. One is getting the data, and two is maybe publishing it in a form that isn't compiled into the module. Or yeah. If, something we have to always update with the module. And that's also a fair point. <clears throat> the second one is not at all um, uh, taken care of by the pull request. Yeah, the, the pull request, um, you know, assuming that it, but, it fixes people's actual issues, then it, that's definitely good in isolation and we should we should make progress on that. Uh, um, do you, should should why don't you and I be joint owners of sure. looking for someone for a victim, and I'll put that under what? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think the next I pinged Manu about this DDC monitor control support, and I haven't. Uh, he says I'm kind of looking at it, but he wants to redo I squared C and Linux KPI first. So that's still in progress. Um, the next one we have is open VPO, VPN DCO, and there's a link to what it is, and that's Peter Crayon had that, and I don't know if that's a new one he added today or if that was already, I think that may have been a new one he added today. I, I think it's fairly new, newly added. Um, uh, it is, uh, it stands for data channel offload. It's basically, um, uh, Oh, I think I, like. I can let you do things like support KTLS, perhaps like open it's, VPN now, like uses buffers and like shoves buffers and open SSL back out, which breaks its ability to use KTLS. And so maybe this is a way to. Yeah, basically, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a, specifically the, this is a Linux implementation here that the, the link will be to, um, but it is, yeah, moving, moving the, um, the crypto to kernel uh, for open VPN. I mean, you know, if we could, if we could join open VPN to KTLS, that would in effect be the same, um, uh, yes, the, the same effect. Um, the um, the implementation there is GPL. Uh, I had some early musings, but I uh, haven't done anything yet with uh, pondering, seeing if the the OpenVPN folks would be willing to uh, do a license the implementation um, so that anything we did need to use, um, if there is. If there is uh, work in there that is not a direct analog to something that we already have, um, we'd be able to use it, but I haven't uh, pursued that yet. Okay. Uh, then the next one we had was from is a mini dumping a live system. That's kind of interesting. And that's Mitchell. So did Mitchell or Alan, either one of you want to talk more about that, what the status is? Perhaps, I guess it's a need, so you don't have it yet. Is this something uh, you're actually Mitchell started work on? work on it. Oh, Mitchell started work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's in progress. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, I know previously uh, <clears throat> some people had talked about code to just estimate the size of a dump while the system is running. I don't know if anybody ever got anywhere with that. 
But if you have that, we could use that for this as well, because we want to make sure you have enough free disk space before we try to dump the kernel. Uh, but you know, we can recover if it turns out you don't or whatever. But uh, OK, sorry, I'm trying to catch up on some backlog. Uh, Constantine hey, asked um, me to put some things on the list that are needs. So <laughs> go ahead and talk more while I do that. Oh, OK, I was going to say, I added my, I added camcorder to the halves. I okay. need to, um, there's some, some polish that needs to happen. And I've based the current version on some uh, speculative uh, cam changes that either need to be um, made real or the dependency needs to change. But I'll take care of mopping all that up. I have it here so we talk about it next time more than anything else. And um, I had a question, um, which was, do we want to have any kind of dates or anything? Um, Mm, when there I mean, was a last status or, you know, everything has a last status and just the one um, Thunderbolt 3 uh, item will just have a, you just use the explanation point to be, to mean in danger or, you know, something along those lines. I think we can do that. So part of what I've done is HackMD has a way that you can push things to a GitHub repository. So to try this oh, out, gotcha. I've made a little repository. <clears throat> It's for now it's in my land, but we can move it to FreeBSD if this works. Um, that holds this file. And so we can push named versions kind of after each conference. And then over in Git, you can actually, even actually in HackMD, you can go and compare differences. You can see what happened in ed edits at different times. But in GitLand, you can look at it. It's in, in Markdown and GitHub. And you can compare the different versions and see what changes happened and kind of get a bit of like do some annotate and history of lines. So. I think that'll maybe fill some of that role. I mean, I'm hopeful. We'll see. So um, let me add these. So Constantine, I th he mentioned one about kernel TLS. I think it's about the ability to have the NIC handle receive offload. Right, right now for NIC KTLS, we only have support for transmit offloads. Um, that's my guess for what Constantine was asking about. And then something called inline IPsec, which is um, like the NIC assists with encryption and decryption of IPsec packets. It's like you're the ability to offload the crypto to the NIC for you. And I'll just put those as needs because he said there were more needs than once. I think it is better to put uh, NVIDIA instead of my name, so. Oh. Okay. Well, how about both of you? Will that work? Yes. Okay. And um, and the I, I've looked a little bit at the IPsec stuff myself. So, uh, I mean, I'll definitely we should coordinate on talking about these things, which we will. So the, the ones that we don't have uh, owners on, <clears throat> um, I just added C add if you're interested to the TB3 based on IRC chatter. But it okay. might make sense to, you know, Ed isn't going to work on it, but Ed is happy to coordinate the people that are working on it. And maybe that could be an interesting, useful distinction here as people come and go. OK. Does that sound good, or am I crazy? No, no, I, we need to. You know, we need to. This is a, a document for us to try to document things. So whatever makes mm -hmm. sense. And from IRC, one more item uh, we had for um, uh, uh, for the needs is um, uh, the WireGuard uh, module. Well, it's kind of a have. Well, it's something. I'll let you categorize where you want to put that one. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of what it is, we uh, uh, we, we need some sort of a uh, 
uh, defined strategy and, and approach, right? Right. And there, I mean, there is code. It's a half. There, there's code, there, there's a port yeah. and so forth. It's about. I guess that's true. Yes, it should be. Uh, it should be in have. It is a. Um, uh, what do we do to make it it real? Okay. And you'll keep adding stuff too. So um, another have that looks like someone added is a nine pfs client. I think that used to be a want. Is it got moved up? Maybe. There's a, a, a somewhat working branch. On yeah, I, I'm aware of the somewhat working part of the branch. <laughs> I, just yeah, think so I don't know. Is there somewhere ha halfway between have and almost have? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, it's fine. I, 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 it it's at least as good as my cam quarter stuff. Um, it sounds um, like. No, mostly. I, no, oh, I, I, you, can't, you can't have more than one mount, or suddenly things go boom. That's is my understanding. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. This is Steve. Um, yeah, we, we have it at Juniper. You can do more than one uh, mount. It's a kernel level thing. That's uh, um, one guy in our in my team that's working on it. I'm I'm trying to push him more to get that stuff upstreamed. So okay. that, and and there's a lot of a lot of fixes that have been done internally at Juniper um, that haven't gone into that branch that he has up on GitHub. I, I've been trying to get him to do it, but we've been swamped with a lot of different things. But I'm, I'm going to really try to uh, push him to. To get that committed. Uh, okay, or, I know there's other folks like at Cambridge. We tried to use it because we'd rather use that than SMBFS with yeah. QNU, and that's where we found that it fell over pretty quick when using it. And then and yeah, there's a lot of fixes debate. that we have internally that need to be um, added to that branch. So um, yeah, we don't want to. Well, I guess I was getting at is we've been debating if we want to try to fix it or not. So it'd be good to avoid duplicating the work. Yeah, um, one one of the things that we're looking at too, and I I, I uh, um put forward to him is um, with QMU five, which then now it's you know, six, um, there's a vert IOFS, which uses um, Fuse yes. as the protocol. So we're gonna look into trying to implement that too, or at least that we're, we're having some discussions internally about implementing that. Oh, that's very interesting. Other, other, I've talked with Peter of Crayon about that a bit too, I think. There's, there's a couple other folks who are interested in that one because um, it has a, an optional kind of zero copy mode that will be really nice. Right, right. Do we want to put that on the need list maybe? Or no, sorry, the want list? Yeah, um, I guess that could go on the want list, yeah. Yeah, VertoFS should probably be on the want I've list. I've participated right in the um, Beehive developers call and there's someone who has access to a pool of uh, motivated students who want to work on this. I think two or three weeks ago. Are you in contact that, with them? Uh, Larkin? Yeah, I yeah, think so. Uh, we can we can maybe try to get folks to get like I can maybe try to go between that. Yeah, and I'm and I'm working on some stuff to try to get better visibility into what goes on in Vertio itself. So it's because um, we had some things with Vertio block devices and some other stuff about seeing. If you get into this situation, in some cases you can, depending on which version of QMU you're running, where um, IO operations on vert queues can stall. And it looks like um, if you're running older QMU, like pre, well, even, even some of the versions of four, there's some issues with um, vert IO having IO threads and um, where some of the vert queue stuff can stall. We actually have, we've been talking, so, some of our products use WinRiver Linux as an underlying um, host OS with a with a virtual machine thing that has uh, FreeBSD based stuff in it. And um, for we're working with WinRiver for um, some fixes for that on the QMU side for uh, for QMU four and earlier. Um, they they have some things that we're trying out, but. Uh, um, as part of debugging that, it's very hard to tell what's going on in the Vert.io layers, especially because you don't have a lot of visibility. And even with um, with Dtrace, there's some points where you can't get visibility unless you have, you, you either flag some functions as don't inline these, or you have to add static probes. So I have some static probes that I'm adding in various places so that you can still keep things inlined. I intend to, uh, to upstream that, I'll, I'll, I'll add to the list. For that, but um, I'm trying to do some some tools to be able to watch 
the uh, IO operations that are happening on uh, vert queues, which is really handy since so, since a lot of things are using vert IO in the QMU case and you you often can't tell why did something stop. So, so I'm trying to improve that situation. That's that, so there's there's a sort of a kind of have sort of want it's gonna <clears throat> you know it, th there'll be things coming in the future. Yeah. Okay. Let's see where we're at on. So we've added some more things up top, but I'm I'm gonna let them set because I think they kind of already have status. Um, if you want to go ahead and move on to the want section. Um, it, these are remaining time to talk about um, wants, and then we have a bit of things to remove at the end that I don't want to skip because it's always a good day when we get to remove code. Um, although some of the wants are actually things that need to be in the acts. <laughs> but um, so uh, EPP, EBP, EBPF, blah, I can talk. I think this was from November. So uh, Hiroki, do you have an update on that one perhaps? Or is the current status still accurate? Can you hear me? Yep. Uh, I have uh, no progress so, uh, so far, but uh, uh, I discussed several uh, people to uh, how to import the EBPF functionality into uh, FreeBSD. Uh, the one big problem is the EPPF uh, VM itself is easy to import, and we can have the extended uh, um, instruction set to improve the current uh, BPF, and uh, uh, we can have the, some hook to um, run the EPPF program, and we can load the uh, uh, EPPF program from the user line to kernel, but um, the big problem is how to use the eBPF program because uh, most of the uh, eBPF program for Linux heavily depends on the uh, internal structure of the kernel. For example, the software defined networking depends on the uh, Linux the SKBuf uh, structure. So we are using MBuf. So if we want to use the Linux program in eBPF, uh, we need some uh, translation layer. And uh, other, for other, uh, so other programs like uh, so SecComp or uh, uh, ABPF applications available for Linux uh, also have the same problem. So uh, just having the EBPF VM is not so useful if we um, aim to have the compatibility uh, with Linux. But if we um, explore the uh, application, our own application, uh, EBPF will be useful to implement the uh, some autonomous circuitry um, inside the kernel. For example, uh, we have a bridge uh, which which is uh, which is which is run by the eBPF program under the uh, kernel without the interaction with the uh, current uh, network stack, for example. So uh, for a uh, fourteenth uh, Willis, mm, we need we still need uh, some discussion about the implementation, but the importing itself is uh, easy to do. That's all. That's all over my comment about this. Okay. Thanks for the update. Um, Alan and Warner, y'all are next with fail-safe boot code. This is part of what we discussed in the working group earlier. Okay. Um, so, part of this originally was the boot once and next boot support for ZFS, which is done, uh, but we still need to make it so that updating your boot code doesn't risk you okay. needing to use a USB stick to fix your system. Okay. I mean, I, I appreciate the working next boot on ZFS since I use next boot a lot. So yep. at least next boot minus K. Um, an SMBFS client for a modern version of SBF MBFS. I believe this was on there from before. I think um, so, yes. And do we, let's see. Oh gosh, I can't remember. 
Do we have a status update on that one? I don't know if Matthias is here or not. OK, um, maybe we can put a whatever our, our status for like like a question mark to say we don't know the status is not updated. Um, then Warner, so <clears throat> this next one, I wonder if you remember what this was. Um, Oxiato had given a talk last November, uh, and so you added an item for better auto tuning for things like read write caching. Do you remember the context of that exactly and what that might be? No. Hmm. Okay. TLDR, no. I think it was different. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember if the if this talk was the, hey, we need to tune the buffer cache. Uh, parameters better for larger memory systems, or if this was an open ZFS uh, thing saying we needed to tune the knobs um, better for that automatically. I, I, I've lost track, unfortunately, of that. And so maybe. Can we just trim it as kind of not actionable if we can't remember what it is? <laughs> uh, let's kill it. Okay. I mean, if unless somebody on IRC says, oh, yeah, I remember that, and they want to put their name there, let's kill it. Yeah, if somebody wants to go watch the video from November and figure out what it was about. We can always re-add it if someone is motivated to work on it. Indeed. But we'll end up in the same. Yeah, but go ahead. Yes, this um, is the problem we have with Bugzilla, right? <laughs> that's it's literally the words that I stopped myself from saying. Um, NPF. So, George, are you around to speak. Oh, I don't see him on the Zoom. Um, I don't know if, it's, if he's still working on NetBSD's firewall because we don't have enough packet filters in the system. Don't see him on IRC. So I'm not sure if that's one he's still working on or not. Um, and I guess actually we'll mark all of George's for now um, kind of a question mark like in need of status. And right, we will still have us on IRC uh, we already have a legend for some things, but we might add it. So the new annotations we're adding today, we might need a little key to say what they mean. Um, yes, Jeff is not here to talk about ZFS ARC and VM page integration. NP safe syscall handlers. I, like, uh, I think the status of this is about the same as it was last time, which is the bulk of the work down to the first pass is done. But I don't know if we made any recent progress on figuring out, are there ones that are currently marked needs giant that aren't? Are, are not marked needs giant that uh, are, sorry, are not marked NP safe that can be marked NP safe. I think that's the kind of long tail of this, and I don't think it's changed since November. Yeah, I think a, a few things have been committed to make it better, but not to materially affect the status. Yeah, I mean, the long that, tail is a little shorter, but it's still pretty long. Yeah, and, and, and like the main infrastructure work is done, I think. Maybe the only, the only thing is at some point, it would be nice to start flipping some of the sense of the flags to being you opt into giant instead of opt out of giant, um, like we do with C dev switch. Um, right. I'd like and, to do that with internet handlers, but we we started that work um, as well as part of the MP safe was trying to mark um, enough things as um, basically mark it both ways, and you have to mark it one way or the other. And once we have everything. With mark that, one way or another, then you can mark yeah. one way or the other. Then we're going to kill the MP safe right. throughout the tree. But um, yeah, there's <clears throat> still too much, and there was some resistance even to that plan. Uh, I think that was taken care of, but I'm not sure. No, I think it's still. I don't think we've switched to annotating giant instead, but but I don't think it's actively being worked on. Okay. Um, so you're up here, and some of these maybe should go. Well, they're kind of axing things, um, but the next four are you. So, do you want to just talk through them? I'll, I'll just talk. I'll just talk about them briefly, and um, <clears throat> you know, it's basically the next three are kill giant. Um, the, there are two big users of giant right now: the keyboard system and Nubus, and a few others. Um, it's weird where you find it um, that are, would be relatively easy to mop up, and. Um, the two big pieces of work here are um, 
making new bus not need giant, <clears throat> which isn't terrible. Um, but you know, it's fourth on my list of things I have time to do two of forever. Um, and the keyboard, AT keyboard and USB keyboard and all that, um, detangling that so that uh, DDB and friends still work. Um, it's a piece of work, but might be easier now than when this was on the list, you know, from years ago, simply because we have better, um, we don't necessarily need to do locking to do this, to get the concurrent access protection. And so um, I think this might be a good case of somebody looking at it hard and being able to do that. I don't have time for that. <clears throat> and then the, the fourth one, Maybe we want to take it off the have need want for 14 because I think it's probably too ambitious. Okay. I don't think we're going to get to that. Um, <clears throat> just there's not enough. Uh, uh, there's it's dependent on the other things, which I think we might barely get done, and it'll be a piece of work once those are done, or at least the strategy is set for that. So, okay, it's gone. <laughs> okay. So that, that's 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 what's that's what I have there on that. Um, we could potentially reword it because a lot of this is you know move away from giant locking rather than just kill it. Um, once those two items are done, there's half a dozen other stupid things that are mop up that you know could easily be done. But until the um, new bus and uh, keyboard uh, driver are fixed, we've got some issues. Okay, um, so I'm trying to watch our time here, and we may go a little bit over, but uh, let's kind of move more quickly, especially through things that are old and already existed. Um, uh, looks like the Panfrost support is something, for example, we just talked about that's up in the have now, so we can probably kill that one. George is not here. Um, move more of if config. I think some of this is still in progress. I think I've seen some commits since November. And uh, yeah, we don't have a, I don't know if the person for gel Kuddle is I don't here. Know if that's Ryan something, right? Oh, is it for gel CTL, I don't think they're here now. No, yeah. And okay. for if config, I don't, Ryan. Yeah, I don't know if Ryan is here or not. Okay, Mitchell had a thing from last time about SVE on ARM. Do you have any more thoughts about that? Or have you had a chance to look at it? Is it still kind of pie in the sky? It's a... Uh... It's still in the same place as uh, when I added that, but okay. it is still on the list of things that I want to do and kind of within foundation uh, scope. Okay. All right. <laughs> the next one, Baptiste or Manu. Manu already says his mic is, doesn't work. That's very convenient for this next item. A <laughs> brand new shell? What are these, what are these people like? People are nuts. Is this a joke or do you still want to keep this one? Um, I know Baptiste mentioned input, and that can be removed. Okay, good. All right, we won't talk about this anymore. Um, XFAT, I, there is an active review for this. I don't know if it's had much recent activity, but I did add the link to the review when I was looking at this earlier this week. So that's, I think, the status of that. I don't think Conrad or Chen are on this call. Um, Suspend and resume for ARM and RISC V. This is also a Mitchell request. Do you have any thoughts on that one? Am I still on the mic? You are now. Okay. Um, it's still no progress. <laughs> still, <laughs> no worries. But, but yeah, it, it is something I'm interested in looking at uh, on the side. For risk five, is there? I mean, normally suspend and resume is a bit like it's not something you do in an emulator. You kind of need a bit of hardware. Or is there a particular piece of hardware you're thinking about targeting for that? Um, no, not not with what's uh, available now. Okay, like I didn't know if the Beagle Five plans to have any kind of reasonable power management or not. Because no. another way to think about this might not be just suspend and resume, but especially the time to the next one. It's just kind of, even if it's using less power and you don't go fully to sleep, but you have the ability to start turning devices off and kind of do power management, that might be the, the even better way to really think about this one. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I've seen some, uh, like there, there is some proposals for how this kind of thing will be done on RISC five, which is kind of why it's added there. But yeah, it's a larger item that will require some thought, I think. Okay. Uh, so the S zero IX, I know I have not looked at this at all. Um, we could at least maybe add a link to Ben's earlier branch that he had that's still on GitHub, but it would need some rebasing and someone would need to apply some love and care to it. Um, SCIO, and I believe maybe someone, Manu, can you speak to this next one? This item is on me. Okay, so we'll reassign. Do you have an update to it? Is there a branch or review or anything like that? He has it working. Ooh. So this is a have. This is not a. I'm going to slide that up. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I thought it was in the wrong place. I'm glad Banu jumped in to, to say that. Because hey, I've been helping it. him uh, tidy up a lot of the um, cam parts of that. OK. Um, and apologies if my audio size said something. And I know my internet was having issues earlier when someone else was talking. So hopefully I'm not sounding like I'm talking through a big batch of water or something. Seems OK here. OK. Um, I think we're getting almost close to the new stuff. Ice Lake PMC. This has Alan down as a responsible. I think this was from last time. Nope, this, this is brand new. Oh, this is brand new. Oh. Yes. Uh, so NetApp wants the hardware PMC stuff for the Intel Ice Lake. It's just, I think, adding definitions and stuff. But uh, it's something that is wanted. And if you're also interested, please get in touch. Uh, Alan, do you know if there's anything um, uh, fundamentally different here. Uh, Mitchell is working on updating the PMU uh, events. Um, and I'm wondering if we'll, if this will just come for free um, with the- with Possibly, the like uh, I looked into it a bit and there's, so the commits in Linux are, don't really, aren't clear about licenses and so on, but there's original stuff from Intel where there's a bunch of JSON files that are dual licensed. But it's, it's, just, the, it's just the data update that, that's needed really, right? As far as I know. Yeah, OK. I've seen Alexander's diff for this. And I, I don't think that that's in upstream Linux yet. But it's more or less the same. It's just new JSON files for a different CPU ID. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess my question there is, does it make more sense for us to come up with our own tools or, or be able to ingest the JSON files from Intel rather than the whatever the Linux people do to it to make their version of the JSON files. Like the the files that go into Linux come through the perf project where they get put into a format for their perf tool. And it's not the data as it comes from Intel. It's reformatted to like one file per something instead of. Um, I mean, the. So there was a bunch of work done a couple of years ago to make it make FreeBSD use the, the perf formatted okay. JSON and, and moving away from that seems like a, a lift that. Right, but it, 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 as long as somebody made that decision at some point, then it, it, I'm fine with it. Yeah. And it probably has the advantage of applying to things other than just Intel, whereas yeah. going to the Intel one wouldn't too, so. Um, yeah. This is this is probably a topic that we 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 could have a um, working group session on at some point as well um, a little later. I bet you it's um, something that there's enough interest in that uh, we can we can do a broader discussion. Okay, uh, next one is Linux um, Linux like a binary support on ARM sixty four. I know this is something that. Edward is looking at at Cambridge, but I don't know if he's looking at the ports side. So I'm not sure what the ports testing mean. And I don't know if we have, I, I don't know if, I think he's running binaries. I don't know, do we have ports infrastructure in place to have like, for example, a Compat Linux meta port and the associated ports for ARM and ARM64 
What about Star Wars yeah. 64? Yeah, so I, I chatted with uh, Mark Lindemann about this uh, some uh, a little bit. Um, Basically, I think the, the issue here is that ports, uh, the ports infrastructure essentially throws up its hands and says, um, you know, uh, Linux later only exists on x86 um, and it just, uh, I don't remember if it's broken or uh, if it's skipped, but what, what the case is. But in general, any, um, uh, any port that says it uses, um, uses Linux, uh, Linux later, uh, gets disabled on ARM64. Um, and I mean, I think, you know, there's, uh, I think the the actual changes needed in the ports infrastructure to support this is extremely minimal. It's it's really just a long tail of, of testing and um, uh, fault finding. So should this item really be about not the base system? Because that's actually, I think, mostly committed. And aside from like additional fixes to get it working. I think that's a set. Is this really about just the ports? And should this line, line item just be about making use Linux equals yes work with ARM64? I, I think so. Um, if, if anyone in IRC has a um, uh, difference of opinion, let us know. But uh, um, you might want to add the also the like the CentOS ports or whatever, the thing that installs the RPMs of, you know, they give you a Linux base system. Yeah. I think that's part of making it. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, again, part of the ports. I think it's just, it's more than just fix the ifs in the, the MK files that say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in particular, I don't think this refers to changes in like the kernel. I think this is more about adding the right infrastructure and ports to support ARM64 Linux binaries. So, Edward. So does that change the owner? Yeah, that's what, I'm, yeah, Edward is not the owner for that. So, we yeah. went back and needed a, 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 a victim. <laughs> Edward um, uh, has a, a you know a, a queue of fixes um, for the base system um, for this, but generally speaking, I think um, it's it, what's in the tree is is generally working, and um, yeah, there's not a there's not a, a high level item we need uh, for the base system. It's it's just a set of bug fixes. Um, this really is ports infrastructure and. Uh, dependent ports dependencies. So I've seen quite a bit of chatter on IRC. I don't know if I've seen anyone volunteer to own it. I have a suggestion on who we could volunteer or volunteer or whatever. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, Vincent, the, the guy that's talking about ARM64 virtualization tomorrow. Ah. He seems to really like making ARM stuff work on FreeBSD. And do you have? last name it's on the schedule yeah. Yeah. yeah he's speaking tomorrow yeah yeah um uh, but this, this, is ben, this is vincent right yeah. yeah yeah okay um but that said i mean i'm i'm also happy to have this parked with me uh, if necessary um to to uh oh i will never turn down the ability to add your name onto something if you volunteer um remember and i'm going to move on in interest of time yeah, um, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to run over maybe 10 to 15 minutes uh, and then do our break. So I'm gonna aim to kind of wrap up here in the next 10 minutes. Uh, remember original interface name, this was an- so Yes, if, you, if config name to rename an interface, being able to tell what it was originally called. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, you have a review for that. So that's a hab, isn't it? Uh, well, it's it, the review is stuck in the fact that ePair interfaces are strange and uh, we need to come up with a solution to the problem. Okay, but if you have a patch, it's still really a have more than a... Yeah, but it doesn't work, so it's not... Really <laughs> <laughs> I have, but broken. Okay. I have um, lots of halves of broken patches count. <laughs> yeah, you need a section for that. Um, I mean, my standard I.O. file one is basically in that column. Detach BPF from IFNET. We kind of talked about this yesterday. Um, do, and I, yeah, I think when, during camcorder, we talked about this more... Um, I wonder if we still want this in this fashion, or is, is this a cleanup of the thing that we currently have that works kind of now? I, I'm not uh, sure why, Gleb. Go uh, ahead, Gleb. Uh, I, think, I think what Warner is doing, uh, if he's doing that faster than what I want to do, uh, not a problem. So let's do it the even without the camcorder. I think that it would be a nice feature to have, to have BPF, uh, Tapping points anywhere in the kernel, and 
at a glance, it seems fairly easy. And I think with the camcorder coming in, uh, the, the, uh, it just should be done. But uh, again, since Warner already has the working version, it, it's fine if the working version of camcorder goes in first. And after that, we, we do a complete diverse of BPF and IFNet uh, so that uh, you can tap on IP input or you can create the IPFW rule uh, where very specific uh, that will uh, give you a stream of BPF packets so that you can run TCP damp on 100 gig interface without uh, disrupting uh, the performance of the machine because you, you are interested in particular host. So there are multiple applications for that and, uh, and of course, Camcorder too. Okay. Um, then you, you actually have the next one as well, Gleb, which is authorization for Nightcraft. Yeah, uh, so I put this into the want item because uh, uh, I, I, I'm not able to be the main driver of that, but looks like we have uh, new committers, Lutz, uh, I hope I pronounced the name correct, uh, who is interested in the net graph and uh, uh, other guys are also. So I think that the time has come to review the synchronization because the original synchronization actually predates uh, the mutex uh, KPI in the kernel. So the net graph has its own locking, uh, very, very uh, specific. And uh, it had, had through, 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 the, through the last decades, it has had problems. So there was a topology mutex introduced, global one. And this topology mutex, to close different panics, the topology mutex were used more and more. And now it effectively becomes like a small giant inside net graph. Uh, and now, we, now that we have the epoch, it seems to me that epoch suits the net graph uh, very well. So, so the graph is a configuration that doesn't change very often. And if we just delay the freeing of the nodes, uh, so uh, so just in my mind, it pans out very beautifully. And if uh, someone is willing to work on that, uh, I, I can help with that. But again, I cannot be the main driver of that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> then um, some of these you've already talked through, sound quirk system, Verto FS. Cumia user, do you want to say anything more about that, Warner, or is your description kind of already cover it? I got nothing to add in the interest of time. If okay. you're interested in helping, get in touch. All right, so the last couple of minutes we have, um, I just want to spend time on this kind of axe candidate section. Um, are there things that we need to need or want to remove from the system? Um, and do we want to talk about them? Uh, the first one we already have here is Firewire. So, and that has Warner's name next to it. Yeah, I'd like to get rid of it. Um, mostly from a CAM support point of view, it's kind of crunchy and it's not very relevant. Um, but every time I talk about it, people say, oh, but I use it for debugging. So I don't know. I, well, um, I mean, but you you can't use it for debugging on a piece of hardware that was made in this decade. Um, well, I mean, so, I guess it's a decade uh, short, but even, even most of the previous decade. And I mean, I must say that my solution to the debugging problem is you use a VM and you use a debug server inside your hypervisor and that looks a little better for things like device. Okay. So I, I guess you're suggesting that I not let that be a blocker and I start a full discussion on Arch? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, that would be I, the I just make sure there really are people who are using it as the kind of remote debug target security hole that it is. Um, but make sure that it's not just a paper tiger. Yeah, I would hate I would hate for the situation to be folks saying I don't want this to go because I could use it for debugging, um, and no one actually because, is. Yeah, because you can't actually use it for debugging on anything that's made in yeah. recent yeah. memory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I tried a little while ago to use it with a PCIe add-on card, and there were issues. So, okay, um, so let's get to the bigger ones. Um, ARM v6. Yeah, this is the old, since Mono doesn't have a microphone, this is the old um, Raspberry Pi original board and the Pi Zeros. 
Um, we've kept uh, support in place for those um, because you know it's convenient for users, but it's also kind of a pain in the ass because we have a, a, another set of packages and another set of um, uh, interfaces in the kernel that have to keep working and some grumpy ARM maintainers that don't like to um, you know do that. So it's, do it's up. Do you really think you're going to do it? Like, um, what do you need to do for a next step? I think that um, the ARM folks need to figure out, can we commit to supporting it for 14 or not? OK. Um, next up are some of the things Kirk lamented yesterday, um, along with Telnet D. Um, which Telnet D versus Telnet, that's an important distinction. Um, I think if you, if you get rid of the Telnet client, you'll have pitchforks in your yard. Um, but Telnet D, R login, and RSH. Is anyone driving this or looking at this? Um, I, I didn't realize my name was beside this next to be left over. Um, <laughs> it's the beauty of these things. <laughs> I know. Adrian had wanted to keep Telnet D because SSHD is too big for routers where you only have 16 megabytes of storage or whatever, but I don't know how much we care about that. The All the R stuff should be nuked from orbit, I think, right? Um, there's also this uh, this wonderful API of libc called R command, RCMD, yeah. which like invokes executables as root. It's outstanding stuff. You should look at that and see if, if, if that can be deprecated or not. Or if we can have compat symbols that just always fail or something. Um, yeah, the R command is special. And there's some other related APIs, like a one that says, um, is the remote user trustworthy as root or not? Which is, the correct answer is no, but it, is <laughs> <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually always return false. So. <clears throat> okay, number next. Um, and we got a hand up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it was just in regards to um, further up where the the uh, wants section was. Um, I think I raised this back in 2017, and uh, um, it's for Christoph. Um, he probably doesn't want this. Um, uh, it's uplifting the PF code. Um, or the syntax really uh, to bring it in line. We like P the the upstream PF syntax has been around for 11 years now, um, and for from an end user, um, a lot of people are having to uh, manage two type two branches of PF um, rule sets um, when they've got a split environment. So it's just um, if we could bring that in line with upstream, that would be much appreciated. Okay, Christoph will hate me. I'm waiting for the screens. Um, he hasn't noticed yet. Okay, I'll put that in a, as a want. And then, let's see. Oh, Christoph wants to talk. I don't know if I want to allow Christoph to talk. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I realize that users want this, uh, but I want someone to do the work because I'm. <laughs> I'm probably not going to. Uh, I have zero spare cycles as it is. Uh, this is a huge project. And we can't just take OpenBSD's PF without a massive performance regression, uh, which A, our users don't want, and B, I don't want. OK, well, just I've marked it as needing an, an owner, because it seems like it's more, you know, I think. Jason's ask is supporting the same syntax. So it means probably re-implementing support for that syntax. May I, may I add uh, just a few words? Go ahead. Uh, so Jason, uh, nine years ago, I have written an email about OpenBSDPF and FreeBSDPF. And today, this email, I can send you a link later. It's still valid and it's even more valid than, than back then. So basically the the, the the time when the PF was first time imported into FreeBSD between forking of OpenBSD and FreeBSD was about six years. And today it's uh, 
I believe about 20 years. So the differences in operating systems are so huge that uh, speaking about importing uh, it as is, is basically impossible. E even the early port was very unstable. It was very unstable until I put a lot of effort into making it FreeBSD TF basically. Uh, so uh, yeah, so, so uh, th th yeah, that's it. Uh, I so basically, the ask disagree. is the same as uh, make IPFW ingest PF rules. Right, it's a completely different firewall at this point. I'm going to disagree well, slightly well, with that. Well, I'm, I'm, but but perhaps we should uh, we should take this discussion to the hallway track after this. Yeah, that's that's probably makes sense. Okay, just scrolling through. Let's see what else have we got in the X list. Um, in interest, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, Ed, are you going to remove the old SMBFS? I, I think we should. I mean, I think it doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Um, the protocol is well and truly deprecated and unsupported um, in most places. Um, I, I mean, it would be very nice to get a kernel um, contemporary SMBFS. Um, Available, but, that's but, orthogonal to this. but but I think it's orthogonal to this. Like um, there, there's basically, um, I, I think that that folks are either not using this or shouldn't be using this. Okay, um, trying I, to look. It, it, it needs. I, I need to follow up on mailing lists and make it a little bit. Um, uh, have a discussion. Uh, Brooks Brooks says he doesn't want SM, SMBFS to, to go until VertFS or 9PFS is uh, available and stable. Yeah, and, and Sherry, we use SMBFS because we have to. Um, so I, I'm aware of that. Um, I'm not going to say anything about MIPS because we don't have enough time today to have a productive discussion in that department. Um, the ARM one, I think, is similar to ARMv6, I think they're really the same thing. Like ARMv6 is just one of the SOCs to consider effectively because it's about specific SOC support. Sinmel, Manu put this. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, he says no plan to work on that anymore. <laughs> okay, does Ed want to do this? And do you, what is your plan for local mail delivery when you do this? Uh, so no, I don't want to take this. Um, I, just, <laughs> I, I, I just want it to happen. Um, <laughs> okay. But well, uh, I, I, I can keep track of it if you want. Okay. Um, well, I think we'll just have a no owner. Let's be realistic. Bootloader fourth support. Owner. I don't know if he's still here. I can only think of two people that would object. <laughs> he's not one of them. Okay. Um, um, yeah. The actually the the, the the one of the people is um, Juniper, so we need to, to touch base okay. with them to see if they. Ah, uh, yes. Questions. The they... other person is um, uh, very invested in it, and. Um, if they're the only person that cares, then it's probably best to let it go because a number of new features are being done as Lua only. So, okay. Um, I'm just going to skip down to the ones that are new because, like, we're already over budget when I wanted when I wanted to stop late. Um, Brooks, you had put remaining ATM support. I thought we removed all the ATM support. We still have some bits we didn't ask. There we are. Um, yeah, so uh, there's still a lib ATM and there's some stuff in NetGraph, um, or it's a lib ng ATM, I think, or something like that. So it might be few, only NetGraph, yeah. Okay. So there's there's a few bits that I suspect the NetGraph stuff doesn't actually work because there's nothing to connect the ends to uh, at this point. Oops. So I think just lop, getting rid of all of it probably makes sense. Okay, then Warner, you said obsolete cam drivers. So are you going to no, do like a, like a, like a, 
what was it? What's the name we call this thing? That verb? No, something. The thing Brooks did with all the NIC drivers. Um, are you going to go through that process? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scott, Scott and I came. Uh, Scott and I um, came up with a list a while ago, and I retired about half of them, and the other half um, didn't happen for various reasons, and need, and some of which need to. So we need to just figure that out. Okay. And then Manu has a slate of drivers he's trying to of old wireless drivers. Internet is a weird thing. It will be kind of nice to get rid of that. Bizarre thing. Set key. What is? Let's see. That's a MD5 thingy that um, Manu found. Uh, that's used. I think that might be the same as NIST crypto. Honestly, I don't know. I think no. The set key. No, it's it's MD5, not DES. Manu is saying so. Right, but is set key still used for the TCP MD5 thing that routers use? Because yeah. it's terrible. Well, set key. No, it's not. That's, that's it. Set key is not the right name for this. Um, like that's set key eight. And this is something else. Oh, it's public key five, not set key five. I, I wrote yeah. that wrong when I put it there. So the only thing I would say, Manu, is you might want to do. Um, Initial commits to mark them deprecated that you can merge to stable before you actually do the reviews to remove them outright. That's usually worked a little um, better for me in the past. Um, okay, well, it is yes. 11 50. Um, we have gone quite a bit over. Um, our next session is whips. Let's take at least 15 minutes and we'll have to start whips a little late. Um, let's take at least 15 minutes. The folks have time to uh, get up, stretch your legs if you need to, run to the restroom. And when we come back, we'll do our work in progress talks. Um, if you signed up for a WIP, please make sure you're on the Zoom call so we can kind of have you staged and ready to go. And we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>